What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. I sold my RSV4 and I think I sold it at the perfect time because Yamaha just dropped the news that they're coming out with the brand new Yamaha R9. And I think this is the perfect time for me to get back into Japanese motorcycles because if you've been following along, I really haven't had very good luck with Italian motorcycles. I know in the past I've had uh, Ducatis. The Ducatis were pretty reliable, believe it or not. However, my Aprilia RSV4 was absolute crap, especially towards the end. So if you guys wanna see a video about my Aprilia RSV4 and why I sold it, leave a comment down below. But regardless, this video is gonna focus 100% on the brand new Yamaha R9. And we're gonna talk about the details and we're gonna walk downstairs into my garage and see if we can kind of sort of get the brand new Yamaha R9 to sit somewhere in my garage. So this way we can take a really, really good close look at it and see what's what. Firstly, if you're a fan of the channel, you already know that I had a Yamaha R6. Unfortunately, I sold the Yamaha R6 and I still regret it to this day. And deep down inside, I really, really love that motorcycle still. And I would love to have it one of these days once again. But as you know, with the resale market, it's selling at a ridiculous price right now. That being said, the brand new Yamaha R9 is 890cc. Now this is pretty significant because the previous gen R6 was 600cc. So this has an almost 300cc larger engine than the previous generation. And it's close to being a leader bike, if you want to call it that. But I still believe that this is a middleweight motorcycle. And I think it's perfect for a lot of people, including myself. That being said, the motorcycle weighs very, very similar to the previous generation R6, sitting somewhere around 430 pounds. But I think we could make it a lot lighter considering that my previous gen R6, once I was done modding it out and making it lighter, it weighed 398 pounds fully wet. But anyway, one of the biggest surprises about this motorcycle is that it's a pretty massive motorcycle. However, the seating position in this motorcycle is relatively low. So if you're a rather shorter rider like myself, I'm somewhere around 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, the seating position is gonna be perfect for you because the seating position is only 32.7 inches. Now in comparison to its competition, the ZX6R, I don't even know if you wanna call it the competition anymore, but if you wanted to compare it to that, that motorcycle is around the same area as well, which is somewhere around 32.5 inches. If I'm wrong, I'll include a caption on the screen. Now, as I mentioned before, this motorcycle is pretty big. Its wheelbase is 55.9 inches. Uh, seeing videos of it and looking at it inside of my garage with AR, I can see that it's a relatively large motorcycle, potentially being around the same height and width as my R6. And Yamaha claims that this has a 50 to 50 weight distribution between the front and the rear. So this motorcycle should be very agile to ride, very lightweight, and I'm hoping it's very, very similar to the R6 because those are some of the characteristics that I absolutely loved about that motorcycle. It felt very light, it felt very flickable, and that was one of the major advantages of owning my R6. Power aside, it was only about 115, 120 horsepower. Who knows, I forgot. But regardless, uh, power isn't everything. Uh, there's a lot of other things that are involved, and I really hope that this has some of the same DNA as the R6. One of the huge upgrades about this motorcycle versus the previous gen is that the previous gen had Nissan calipers. The Nissan calipers, I never really had a problem with. They stopped me very well. I've been to the track dozens of times with that motorcycle, and I've never ever had a single issue riding all the way to the limit and then hitting the brakes really hard before I got to the corner. However, with this motorcycle, they upgraded it to the Brembo Stylemas. Now, as you know, the Stylema brakes up until this point were Brembo's top of the line brakes for a lot of the super bikes. As a matter of fact, my RSV4 had it. The current generation Ducati V4S, I believe still has it. I'm not 100% sure, but I know the previous gen definitely had it. But look at any high performance motorcycle, and the Brembo Stylema brakes is something that they all have in common. And I'm really happy that the brand new generation R9 has them as well. That being said, Brembo has come out with an upgraded brake set over the Stylemas, and I believe they're gonna be included in the 2025 RSV4. If you guys are interested to learn a little bit more about the 2025 RSV4, drop a comment down below. Now, one of the things I'm super excited about is the brand new dash. Now, this brand new dash is really tricked out and it has something that no other sport bike has 
at this current moment. And that is something where if you're if you have a pit crew, which I don't think any of us will ever have if you're riding this bike mainly on the street, um, especially if you go into the track or whatever, your friends are going to play games with you and send you stupid messages if you ever use this feature. But um, if you actually have a pit crew and you're using this motorcycle specifically to race, your pit crew can send you messages directly to the dash. And that's something really, really cool for a 12,000, $300, $400 dollar motorcycle out the door. I'm not exactly sure what this thing is going to cost, but I think that is a really, really slick feature and it comes with a lot of bragging rights. So thank you Yamaha for including that. <laughs> I think you sold me on that feature. Uh, but regardless, it has a six axis IMU, all the latest gadgets that you could imagine, including all the stuff that was in the Yamaha R1 previously. Some of the technology that we can look forward to is nine levels of TC. I think the previous generation, don't quote me on this, had about three to five levels of TC. This new generation also has three levels of lift control because it has a gargantuan amount of torque and I think you're gonna need it on the street, especially if you have a really heavy wrist like I do. And then finally, they have something called brake control system. And I think both you and I know what that is. That's pretty much engine braking. So you can change your engine braking to suit your style, not only on the street, but also on the track. And then last but not least, it comes in three different colors. And my favorite color being the white and the red. They specifically call them Team Yamaha Blue, Raven Black, and Intensity White Redline. Intensity white, red line is my favorite color. And then my most favorite feature of them all is the price tag, $12,499 for everything that you get on this Yamaha R9. And I'm really, really happy about that price tag because it's the perfect price to charge for a motorcycle with all of this capability. And I think, and don't quote me on this, and I think it might even be better than the previous generation R6. That being said, I'm 100% going to buy this motorcycle. This motorcycle will be my next one. And I'm planning to go to my local dealership and drop a deposit. So this way I can get delivery of it in March of 2025. But between now and then, I think I'm gonna drop a lot of videos on the R9 in anticipation for the release. And of course, when I get mine, we're gonna go into the dealership together and I'm gonna take you guys along with me to pick up my brand new Yamaha R9. But until then, as an FYI, I'm including a link down below for a brand new course that I'm coming out. This course is going to be called Motorcycle Mastery, and it's something that I've been working on for a very, very long time. So the link is down below if you want to learn a little bit more about it. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.